Hey folks, it's Ray from DCRainmaker.com. I'm here with GoPro's Karma Drone, and you're gonna do a deep dive through all the features. We're gonna start off with the backpack that you see right there, and then go through the remote control, the drone itself, how you fold things, and the gimbal. Uh, with that, let's begin. Okay, so cracking this case open here. First thing to note is it's a hard case. Um, it's, it's definitely can take a, a whack. There's no problems there at all. Um, now, this comes with the Karma Drone. So the whole kit, everything you see here comes with the drone. Uh, what's also notable is that GoPro made a backpack called a Seeker, uh, and they made that uh, this summer. And that backpack is actually also designed to hold this entire thing, just without this necessarily super hard um, shell, but it's still a pretty, a pretty good barrier against protection, but it's a little bit lighter than this whole case is. So inside we have the drone itself. You'll see the bat or the uh, props fit on it uh, as is. So you don't have to necessarily take the props off to put it in a case, which is something that isn't always been the case when you look at uh, other drones like DJI and things like that. You have to take all those props off. So this just saves you a lot of time when you're out in, uh, in the, uh, on the mountain or wherever it may be. We've then got the charging cable here. So we'll just kind of take some of these parts out just so you can see them. So this is the charger there. Um, this one has a US adapter, but you know, you can go either way. We then have the USB uh, charging port there for the controller. So this way you can uh, charge it just on the, let's see, it's on one of the sides here. I'll find it, there we go. Um, so you pop this open, plug this in. So let's move this out of the way here. Next, we've got one of the batteries. Uh, so you can see it's, it's fairly beefy. It's roughly the same kind of general dimensions as the DJI batteries. Um, maybe a little bit longer, a little bit skinnier though. So it's kind of, you know, it's, it's different, but uh, that's all right. Um, and I mentioned earlier, you can go ahead and plug it into the, uh, the battery here by using this charging clip just that way. So it looks like we flip it over uh, and it goes right in and there we go. So that allows you to charge the battery quickly and easily. You don't have to plug the drone plugged in. We then have the Karma grip here. This is for the gimbal that plugs into it. Um, so you'll see this comes with every uh, Karma drone and allows you to go ahead and pop the gimbal off the front of the unit here into this and uses the handheld gimbal. Uh, check this video out there up above uh, for more information about that. Next, we've got the controller itself. Um, so that's the battery cover there. I'm gonna move that out of the way. And then you open it up uh, and then I can go ahead and power it on here. And this controller uh, controls not only the drone, the drone, but also the camera that you put on the front of it, um, as long as it's a Hero 4 or Hero 5 camera. If it's a Hero 3 camera, then you don't have control of the settings in the camera, but you can go ahead and control the angle of the camera uh, using the buttons on the back. And we'll get to that in a second, or the, uh, the roller on the back there. And then finally, we have the drone itself. Um, so you can see the whole thing just lifts up like this. You know, looking at it, um, it's, it's somewhat heavy. This is with a battery in it, so this, that was actually a second battery there. Uh, you can put one battery here, one battery there, um, you can really fit a lot of extra batteries here. Like if you took out the charger, for example, so let me just show you that real quick here. Um, you can see we left the charger behind and even left the, the grip somewhere else. You can put batteries in a lot of places here. Uh, so it looks like you can fit, you know, at least four batteries. I would say four batteries plus the, the unit itself in here. Um, and then less if you want to put the Karma grip uh, somewhere in the case as well, or you can just kind of stuff it in there and hope for the best. So here's this. Uh, let's go ahead and get started on this and how this looks. Um, first of all, you have the landing gear that pops out of the bottom. Uh, so this folds up like this, again, reducing the stack height that you have on the unit itself, which is great. Uh, then you have the arms which fold out. Um, so you go like this, just simply pop them out and back. You know, it's relatively straightforward uh, and you're done. Like there's nothing, nothing else to do. Everything's locked in place. Uh, I mean, this certainly if it hit a tree or something would pop back, but really that's kind of least your problems at that point. We've then got the gimbal up here. Um, and you can see that this is off right now, otherwise it would be uh, kind of you know, perfectly level. Uh, so I can go ahead and I'll turn it on in a second here. And then you have this locking ring right there that allows you to go ahead and take out the gimbal and pop it on um, the Karma Grip. And again, I'll talk about that in a moment. So now let's go ahead and, and pull out the remote and kind of walk through some of the steps here. Okay, so I've already got the remote on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and actually turn on the drone itself. So I'm gonna put this off the side for a quick second here. And I'm gonna put this right there uh, on this rock so you can kind of see what's going on. So I'm gonna pop out this landing gear there. There we go. And now I'm gonna turn it on by just pressing this button right there. Um, and once I do that, what you'll see here is the props are turning by themselves because of the wind. There's nothing else going on. Uh, the lights just turned down down there as well as down there, green right there, red right here. The camera also just turned on. So you heard the beep, beep, beep of the camera itself turning on. So uh, that's powered up by the drone. Um, and the way that works is in the gimbal itself, uh, there's both a USB-C port as well as a HDMI port. Uh, HDMI is for transferring the video back to the controller uh, and the USB-C provides power as well as control. Okay, so here's the drone controller here. Um, now we're gonna talk about some of the, the options and what are on here. Uh, you've got your joysticks right here for control. Uh, on the back side here, you have 
your gimbal control, this goes up and down for the gimbal. Um, so if you look at the drone here, I should be at a, there we go, you can see as I do that, um, the camera on the front there rotates back and forth. Uh, this is obviously power. Um, you have start and stop for turning it on. This is your takeoff uh, and return to home point there. On this side here, we have an automatic highlight tag, uh, and then we have recording stop and start. Uh, so again, with the, and this is also changing your mode of your camera as well. With the highlight tag, what that does allows you to highlight a point in time uh, within the video, so you can find it quickly and easily within GoPro's uh, basically online editor, not online, but their editing system, both on the desktop as well as mobile apps. The screen itself is pretty bright. I'm, I'm outside. You can see my reflection right there, in fact. Um, I'm going to go ahead and it's all touch screen, so you're not using your phone for everything or anything at all, sorry. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and you can see maps, for example. Um, now, the way this works is you're going to load in different maps based on your location. So this is done via Wi-Fi at your house. And if you went back, let me just go into maps here to show you what I, I see there. Uh, Internet's not available right here. Uh, this would allow you to load this is Squaw Valley. Uh, and I can go back and you can add locations in uh, once you're connected to Wi-Fi. And right now, again, I'm not, not in Wi-Fi range here. Uh, but if I go back to the controller, I'll show you in the connect um, options. This is where you connect to uh, the Karma drone as well as connect to Wi-Fi at your house. Uh, that way you can download maps. This is also where you can connect to the passenger app. Uh, the passenger app allows a second person to use their mobile phone to go ahead and control the camera as well as view what the camera is doing. So essentially it's like a secondary controller or secondary remote operator. Um, and that's something that's really notable because on a DJI platform, for example, you can do that, uh, but it requires a whole separate controller and that's cost a lot of money, uh, whereas this doesn't. So it's something that's, uh, you know, it's definitely a cool option. It allows just your friend to grab their phone and toss it in and be good to go. Uh, we'll go into preferences real quick here. We have voice alerts, uh, volume is muted, so we can turn that up for the fun of it. There we go, go back. And you just press these big buttons to go back. We sleep display, language, so if we look at uh, units here, imperial metrics, that's things like feet, miles per hour, etc. Uh, let's see, again, going back to language, just to show you what's in there. You can see all the languages right there that are supported. Sorry for the helicopter that's coming by here. And then uh, that's pretty much it in the preferences right now. Uh, so it's a little bit easier, so I'm kind of holding at the same time, so I'm missing some of those taps there. Uh, let's see, GoPro cares if you crash your drone. Uh, Learn allows you to go into the simulator, um, so you can say practice flying in the flight simulator here, and crack that open. Now this is cool, it allows you to easily control where you're going, so I'll show you that here. I'll load this up. Okay, there we go. Um, so you see now it's, it's loaded up. I can go ahead then and uh, press and hold the start button to start the motors. Two, one. And now it started the motors there, and I can press tap to take off. Um, and this is all in the simulator itself. Uh, and at this point, I can go ahead and change view, so I can look at the first person view there by tapping that, uh, and then simply control, this is going up, uh, forward, you know, turning around. Um, the drone controls are very similar to other drones, there's not a lot of difference here. I can uh, control the gimbal by using the, the down, uh, up and down on the back here. Um, now what that's doing up here is it's showing you the angle as well, which is kind of nice, like it's a handy little thing to be able to quickly see the angle, so I'm trying to replicate a shot over and over again. Uh, and then again, I can go up, uh, forward, I mean, it's all, uh, pretty standard for drones is how his drone and so far as how drones work uh, nothing really terribly different here uh, I can change my camera mode here. I don't know if it's going to show that in the simulator. It doesn't look like it uh, And the same with the highlight tag those point aren't quite working, which is fine And I'll go ahead and press this uh, Return to home button there and you can say return to launch and return, return to you That's useful if you've moved since you've taken off So like if you're skiing down a hill and you start at the top of the hill, you don't want the drone to return to the top of the lift. You want it to return to you if you're at the bottom of the hill. Uh, so I would go just say, return to launch, and it'll go back there. It probably shouldn't tap hard enough there. Um, and you can see now it's showing me the distance there, um, and it's going to go ahead and return it automatically to me. And there we go. And it'll go ahead and it'll land here in a second. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of the simulator here. Uh, I'm going to basically just cancel that operation. And we'll go back into the main mode here and we can also look at media that's on the unit itself. Okay, so there you go. Uh, some of the media, this is mostly just from within the show floor there. Um, now it's pulling it up relatively quickly, so I'm gonna go ahead and just click on a, uh, let's just click on something random here. I'll click on this, I don't know what this is. And we can hit play. Just to show you how fast this, this loads if you're out somewhere else and wanna kinda see this here and you know, see video in real time. Um, so there you go. Uh, I pulled that pretty quickly there, you know, maybe, was it, 10 seconds to get that to go, and now it replays it. So it's not bad if you wanted to quickly check something. Uh, both photos, videos uh, are offered in this.
So that looks like that's pretty much all the options at this point um, when it comes to what we can do within the controller right here. Uh, you go swipe up here to begin. So in this case, uh, we could take off, but we can't. Um, we're actually right within the range of uh, Las Vegas Airport, so I'm too close to do that. Um, but to show you some controls within this, so here's your flight setting options. Uh, so we can go ahead and look at uh, volume, brightness, easy mode, uh, distance limits for distance and height. Uh, so you can see maximum height, uh, distance, return altitude. You know, if I go above that, it's going to return back. Uh, camera tilt for speed and direction. So you can see uh, the speed and how fast it's going to move. Uh, that's useful when depending on what kind of shots you want to get. The tilt wheel here, uh, if you want to change the inversion on that. Uh, passenger app is off because I haven't paired that. Front lights, you can turn that. Uh, looks like on or off here. There we go. And then calibration of the drone controller if you had to. Um, out of flight settings here, if I tap this, I'm going to basically see this. Uh, it doesn't, again, have uh, Wi-Fi here at the moment to get a better view. Uh, let's see if I get this back to the camera view, maybe. Uh, so this is going to change my mode settings. So uh, in this case, I can video mode, for example, photo, time lapse, go over here. Capture mode, the same thing. Resolution, obviously, I wouldn't use, four, I wouldn't use a 960. I'd use 4K, because that's much better. Um, and there we go. Uh, and up here, I've got my stats. Uh, let's see if I can, I can't tap any of those, but just kind of give you a, a preview of what those look like. And then my battery remaining up here, uh, 12 minutes remaining. It's roughly 20 minutes. So this green bar would be always a far side there if it was fully charged. In this case, it is not. So again, as I mentioned before, uh, we can't take off here, unfortunately. We're within range of the Vegas airport. Um, and so that'd be a, a bad thing to do. Uh, it's only about a mile away. Oh, so one last thing I wanted to show you is the camera control itself. Sorry, I totally forgot to do that. Um, this is on the gimbal here. So right now you're looking at what you thought was probably the, the uh, Las Vegas like landscape, but in reality, there's actually the rock below it. So if I do this, you'll see the camera moves up and there we go. And I can shift down, up, down again. Uh, pretty straightforward. You can't control left or right in the camera. It's merely up and down. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much all there is on this mode, which is pretty common for most drones until you get to the really high end uh, pro versions. Okay, so we have the gimbal here, and I want to talk about how to remove the gimbal and some of the gimbal pieces. Um, so to remove it, you're going to go ahead and basically just twist this lock ring that you see right there. Uh, just twist it this way, and then you can go ahead and pull the gimbal straight on out like that. Um, now the gimbal is separated from the drone, so you can see inside there, uh, they've got USB-C port down there, and the charging right there as well. Uh, so we're going to go move this out of the way and talk purely about the gimbal itself. Okay, so now here are the two pieces right now. We have the Karma Grip, which is this component here, and then we have the gimbal uh, that came with the, in the drone. Uh, this all comes in that entire Karma package. Uh, you can also buy this separately. It's $2.99 to buy this without the camera, uh, but this, in this case, it comes with the drone, so we're gonna kind of talk through how it works. So you'll go ahead and take this then, and you'll put it inside there, so you're just gonna match those up, stick it inside, and then take this lock ring just sort of like before, and then you're gonna go ahead and slide it like that, and you're good to go. And now it's pretty stuffed. Like, this is not gonna go anywhere. It's it's really sturdy. This is it's really, quite frankly, a beast of a gimbal compared to a lot of other ones out there. Um, but it is sturdy. It's not something that you're going to easily break. I've got some of the Fujitech ones and some other gimbals, and those certainly are easier to break than this. I, I think this would be really difficult to break, to be quite honest. Uh, it's well protected in the seals here, uh, so it's good. So in this case, I'm going to go and turn it on. So I'm going to hold down the power button there and get this powered up. Uh, you can see the LED lights right there showing you my status. And now it's on. Uh, and you know, I'm gonna got a whole separate video on the gimbal, so I'm gonna save that for a second. You can go ahead and hit that video up there and look at all the details there. Okay, before we wrap up, I just wanted to kind of show you this unfolding uh, as opposed to being on the rock earlier. We're just gonna kind of do it here in person. So it's really simple. All you're gonna do is take out this arm, the next arm, third arm, fourth arm, flip it around, and then pop out the landing gear, and you're done. Uh, at this point, you go ahead and power it on, it would find GPS signal, and you'd be good to go. Speaking of being good to go, let's talk about comparative landscape. Obviously, GoPro is not the first drone company out there. There are plenty more, uh, plenty more that are quite frankly way more popular at this point. Um, but GoPro is something that's well known within the consumer brand space. So if you were to walk on a Best Buy and see a GoPro drone or DJI drone, the average consumer is probably gonna choose GoPro regardless of what they know about the features. For those that are more informed right now, um, there's obviously way more features on something like a DJI drone. I think there's no comparison there when it comes to features in terms of software. Uh, DJI has you know, probably 100 more features than GoPro does. Uh, and it's an area that GoPro is certainly gonna have to keep up with them. 
At the same time, GoPro's got a beautiful hardware package here. Uh, this is kind of like the AirDog drone, except just more refined. It's cleaner, you don't take the props off. Um, it's just a better design here than that unit. Uh, now the AirDog has a lot more features when it comes to tracking. It's got a transmitter you put on a person. You can see my video up there about that. Uh, whereas this has no tracking at all. And it's something that's actually surprised a lot of people. Uh, given that GoPro bought an autonomous tracking drone company in France, um, there's nothing in here that is tracking. Uh, so there's also nothing in here that is optical avoidance. There's no um, optical sensors on this. There's no LiDAR. There's no radar of any sort uh, to be able to do that down the road. So obstacle avoidance will likely have to come through hardware updates, uh, whereas something like tracking could probably come uh, through a combination of software updates as well as potentially hardware updates. So I could see a scenario where GoPro sells a small module, you put that on your person, and it'll track you as you're going down the hill. Right now they have these four basic tracking modes, a cable cam, a kind of a drone selfie of sorts, um, and then just a, a simple point-to-point -point waypoint mode, and those allow you to go ahead and do some very basic cinematic shots, um, but nothing compared to what DJI and others do. Um, again, though, it really does come down to your preference on size. I love how simple this is to pack up in that backpack, either this or the secret backpack, and be off and running. Uh, and the fact that it supports the Hero 5 action cam, so, or the Hero 4. So if you already have an action cam, that'll save you quite a bit of cash uh, compared to some of the competitors out there that even though they have cameras on the front of them, um, you're usually going to pay for that in some way, shape, or form. So with that, thanks for watching. Go and hit that like button down below, as well as the subscribe button. Uh, there's plenty more sports technology goodness coming. In fact, I already have an entire video on the Hero 5 and all the features just like this, kind of a deep dive into that. Uh, so you definitely check that out up there. Um, with that, have a good one.